Today, I'm taking a look at the Wild Horse 5 versus the Terrakiger 5. I recently had the chance to run a Ragnar trail relay up in the Tetons in Wyoming, and I brought both of these shoes, the Wild Horse 5 and the Terra Kiger 5 with me. Now the Terra Kiger 5, I ended up running on my night loop in that relay, so there isn't a lot of footage, but I'll also refer to some running footage I captured earlier this year in May when I was out in Scottsdale running up in the hills there. The terrain was somewhat similar and the amount of vertical gain was similar, but the altitudes were certainly different. Before I get into my thoughts on these two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Terra Kiger 5 was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports for the purpose of review, and the Wild Horse 5 was sent to me by Nike, so I didn't have to pay for either of these two shoes. However, no one's paying me to make this video, no one's paying me to wear any of these shoes, and no one's going to have a chance to preview any of my thoughts in comparing these two shoes together before you guys get a chance to see them on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, the Wild Horse 5 is a trail shoe with a Phylon midsole, a Zoom Air unit in the heel, and a rock plate in the forefoot. And the Terra Kiger 5 is a React Foam midsole with a rock plate in the forefoot and a Zoom Air unit in the heel. So in essence, they're very similar in terms of those basic parameters with the main difference being the midsole foam. The other difference being the heel drop. Normally, I don't really talk a lot about heel drop, but for these two shoes, it is a substantial difference. We have an eight millimeter heel drop in the Wild Horse 5 and a four millimeter heel drop in the Terra Kiger 5. Now, now, ultimately, what that made for me was a two shoes that serve kind of two very different purposes. The Wild Horse 5 uh, seemed to be more of a workhorse type of shoe, something that I could see as being more of a daily trainer. And the Terra Kiger 5 seemed to be a little bit faster, lighter, something that I, maybe I would wear on a race day or maybe wear on a day that it's a little bit of an easier trail that I'm running on. Now, in terms of the uppers, what we see in the Wild Horse 5 is what I would consider to be more of like a traditional running shoe type upper. There's some mesh in the forefoot. Uh, that is nice and breathable, but then as we get towards the sides and the back of the shoe, uh, it's less breathable there to keep some of the elements out, and it just feels more kind of old school in a way, or just like a regular upper. In terms of the upper on the Terra Kiger 5, it seems a little bit more modern. Uh, the mesh seems to be uh, of a little bit of a thinner material, a lot more breathable. There's some padding, not quite as much as in, on the Wild Horse, five uh, and both of the shoes do have uh, heel tabs. The lacing system on the Terra Kiger 5 is also a little bit different. Reminds me of something that we saw on the Gakuso Turbo. That's the first place I saw a lacing system like this where the laces go kind of buried into the shoe at the forefoot. Uh, I found that it was made for a very comfortable uh, fit for the laces and the, the tongue has a little bit of padding, not very much. In contrast on the Wild Horse 5, uh, you have a more of a traditional lacing system and the tongue is much more padded here. Again, leading me to more of that feel that this is your daily trainer because there's just more padding all around any part of the shoe that's gonna be touching your ankle or the top of your foot. So both of these shoes did really well for me when I was out in the hills out there in Wyoming and in Scottsdale. Uh, my ultimate impression was that uh, this shoe seemed to protect me a lot more from the elements. I don't know if it's the Phylon, which is a material that I've only experienced personally in one other shoe, and that's the Zoom Streak 7, but it's a very different implementation there. there the amount of Phylon is a lot less. There's also a shank in that shoe, and so the effect there to gives me the sensation that Phylon is really bouncy. Uh, I didn't get that sense here with the um, Wild Horse 5, and the ultimate sensation that I got was that 
the Phylon was a little bit stiffer of a midsole material, so not as soft. I didn't feel like I was getting as much cushion uh, on my feet as I was running, but I definitely felt like I was getting a lot more protection of my feet. So when I was running through the trails, hitting rocks, hitting those uneven surfaces, I felt like I was much more sure-footed and stable in this shoe. The Terra Kiger wasn't unstable and it wasn't not sure-footed, but the feeling that I got running in this shoe, both uh, at night in Wyoming and during the day in Arizona, uh, was that this was uh, a little bit more nimble of a shoe, despite some of this really aggressive looking outsole pattern. Uh, and I felt like the rock plate wasn't as substantial. There were certainly some times as I was running, and maybe it's because I was running at the night and couldn't see some of the rocks as well ahead of time, so maybe I couldn't anticipate them better. Uh, but I felt like I wasn't getting as much protection from kind of the elements, like the harshness of the rocks and the terrain in the Terror Kiger 5 as I was in the Wild Horse 5. It wasn't uncomfortable, it wasn't painful, but I definitely noticed a difference. And maybe it was that React foam felt a little bit softer, but I felt like more of the rocks were being transmitted that sensation was of the trail was coming through my feet a little bit more in the Terror Kiger 5 than in the Wild Horse. It's not like I felt disconnected from the trails in the Wild Horse 5, but I felt like uh, I could worry a little bit less about what I was stepping on uh, when I was in the Wild Horse 5. So I think that there's really ultimately two ways that you can look at the differences uh, between these two shoes. And for me, taking it from a Roadrunner's perspective, my kind of first gut is to say, well, this is the daily trainer and this is the faster day or the race shoe. But I think the other way to look at it, because these are tools like trail running shoes, is that I think that you could look at them as two different tools for two different jobs, depending on the type of terrain you're going to encounter or expect to encounter on any given day. I think that this is something that can take light trails to, to intermediate trails, depending on just how rocky and how gnarly things are gonna get while you're out there. But if you know that things are gonna get pretty tough and you're on a, like an intermediate level trail, something that's gonna be a lot tougher, a lot more rocks, a lot more uncertain in terms of what you're going to encounter, then I might reach for the Wild Horse 5 just because I feel like uh, that whether it's the Phylon or the differences in the way that the rock plate's implemented, I just feel like my foot is a little bit more protected from the trail when it's inside this shoe. So those are kind of the two ways that I would tend to look at the differences between these two shoes. Another thing is that the Wild Horse 5, I'm not sure what the exact weight is on it, and I'll post what the different weights and heel drops are in the description. Um, but the way this is a little bit heavier of a shoe, doesn't feel that heavy on foot, the balance is pretty good, but it is uh, heavier than the Terror Kiger 5. So there's just something else to, to keep in mind as you're considering the differences between the, those two shoes. So those are my thoughts on the Wild Horse 5 versus the Terra Kiger 5. Let me know in the description if you've had a chance to run in those shoes and whether I'm totally off base or if maybe I'm starting to figure out trail shoes out just a little bit. Before I go for today, though, I do want to remind you about the charity run for the week. It's Scott Boatwright. He's running the Chicago Marathon and raising money for rising New York roadrunners. It's a program that provides free programming to schools, community centers, and after-school programs to introduce children to the benefits of an active lifestyle. I was happy to donate $70 to Scott's fundraising efforts, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?